Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through ideas for a momentum unit, and today we're going to be talking about a very crucial idea called the conservation of momentum. Before we move on, I do want to remind you what we mean when we say conservation. Conservation is going to have to do with not losing something. And in physics terms, it means that we have the same amount of something before an event as we have after the event. And this holds true for momentum when we can ignore friction. As long as we ignore friction, conservation of momentum holds true. And as long as we're talking about isolated objects that don't have significant outside forces on them, then conservation of momentum holds true. That means the total amount of momentum before an event is equal to the total amount of momentum after an event. And the major strategy we're going to use for solving these types of problems is to first ask ourselves, what is the event? Generally, the event is going to be one of three things we're going to be talking about. A separation, a joining together, or two objects bouncing off of each other. Secondly, how many objects are there before the event? And this is where it may be a little strange to think of this in physics terms, but I'll talk you through this in a moment. Like a ball could be an object, but if someone is holding on to a ball, then that person who's holding the ball as well as the ball will count as one object. So I'll talk you through what I mean by that. And how many objects are there after the event? So let's look at these three examples right here. We'll start with the football player on the left-hand side. So what is the event? What do you think? All right, well, the event is a separation. In terms of momentum, we're separating one object into two objects, you could say. So for B, how many objects are there before the event? There is one. So the player, as well as the football, count as one object, so to speak, for momentum terms. Then we have the event. That event kind of represents an equal sign in the middle. And then lastly, we have two objects after the event for this person. So what I would call this is I would call this a one to two situation, or you could call this a separation. All right, let's take a look at this example over here. What is the event? You could say in terms of momentum, it is a joining together or a collision where two objects stick together. And so how many objects are there before the event? Well, before the catching of the football, there were two. There was the ball and the football player. We treat those as two separate objects because before they collide, before the ball is caught, they are moving independently of each other. And how many objects are there after the event? Well, there's one. And I know this guy isn't the exact same thing as the football, but we treat them as one object in terms of momentum because it does describe what's going on. So this I would call a two to one situation. All right, how about this last scenario over here? So let's think about this. What is the event? Well, the event is a collision where the two objects, the soccer player and the soccer ball, bounce off each other. They don't stick together like in this scenario over here. They bounce off each other. So how many objects do you have before the bounce? Well, you have two. How many do you have after the bounce? You have two. So I would call this a two-to-two -two scenario or a two-to-two -two situation. All right, now based on that, we're going to derive our three equations that we can use for these problems. So before we do that, let's remember our basic momentum equation over here. Remember that momentum is a vector. Momentum is P over here. This M is mass. This V is velocity. And what we have said so far today is that our total momentum before an event is equal to the total momentum after the event, as long as friction doesn't play some huge role and these are isolated objects in a system. They're just interacting together, like a soccer ball bouncing off a soccer player. All right, so let's go back to our first example, though. So you have the quarterback throwing the football. We called that a one to two scenario. This one helps us to recognize how many mathematical terms we're going to have on the left side of the equation. And this 2 helps us to recognize how many objects we have, but also how many mathematical terms we're going to have on the right side of the equation. So here is what this is going to look like. So you have the momentum of both objects because they're together before the event. And so we combine the mass of the quarterback in this case in the football times their initial velocity together is equal to the mass of, say, the football times the velocity of the football final plus the mass of the quarterback times the velocity of the quarterback final. So that's what we mean here when we say momentum is conserved. We have a one to two scenario or a separation situation. Okay, let's take a look at our second scenario. Our second scenario was a two to one situation. It's also called an inelastic collision. Inelastic just means they don't bounce off each other. In fact, they stick together. So if you think about it, we've got two terms on the left, one term on the right. Each term is an MV. 
think about what this equation is going to look like for the 2 to 1 scenario. All right, it's going to look like this. So you've got your m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial is equal to m1 plus 2. So you add together these masses times v1 final. In other words, after this guy catches the ball, he's going to move with the football kind of like one object in terms of momentum. So we add the mass of the football to his mass and we can solve the problem. All right, let's take a look at our last scenario here. We said this was a two to two situation. This is also called an elastic collision. This also helps us to understand we're gonna have two objects as well as two terms before the event. That means to the left of the equal sign over here. And then we're gonna have two objects or two mathematical terms as well on the right side of the equation after the event. So I want you to anticipate what does this equation look like? Think about what is this equation gonna be? And in fact, I have my students derive this as part of quizzes and tests and so on, and I just give them this. So this is good practice to see if you understand it. So what do you think this equation is gonna look like? All right, and so this is what it's gonna look like here. If you can understand what we just went over, that's probably the hardest part of doing a conservation of momentum problem, setting it up correctly. And there is one more thing to be careful of. These problems are really not that hard to do, but it's easy to make a mistake where you put the mass of like number one where the mass of number two belongs, that kind of thing. And I'm even gonna change the subscripts to make them a little more user-friendly for each of the problems that I'm gonna show you. So. Please stick around for our next screencast. I'm going to go through three quick examples of how this works itself out. And if you follow these logical steps, it'll help you to be able to do well on a test in your physics class. So if you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.